Welcome to the Insomnia Project, the holiday episodes. Today is December 2nd, and I want to thank you all for joining us on these more peppier episodes. So they might not necessarily bring you to sleep, but we hope they're a fine companion for you during this holiday season. I'm your host, Marco Timpano, and alongside me is... The more peppier or more pepperier or more peppy, Amanda Barker. And I wanted to mention, uh, Amanda, that today, December 2nd, this is uh, an episode where we're going to talk about the Christmas cupboard that we mentioned in yesterday's episode. Interesting. So what you call a cupboard, because you're Canadian born. Uh Uh-oh. I call a cabinet. Oh, okay. Yeah, Did I, you know that? Uh, I guess, yeah. No, I didn't actually. Yeah, cupboard is, is not, well, I don't know. It's probably in some parts of the States, but in my neck of the woods, it uh, we always say cabinets. Kitchen cabinets, not kitchen cupboards. Oh. Yeah. And I guess in this case, there's, oh, there was a cup in our in our holiday. There was a cup, a cup in the cupboard. Cupboard, yes. Um, I'm drinking a and, wonderful pink hot chocolate. I just want to mention that because people may have heard me just take a gulp right now. It's a ruby, a ruby chocolate, hot chocolate. Yeah. And so it's, it's delightful. Pink. It looks kind of like, like Pepto-Bismol, but it doesn't, it tastes like ruby chocolate. Yeah. Um, so and we say cupboard, but it's cupboard, isn't it? Cupboard. Yeah. But cupboard is how it. Cupboard. Yeah. It's just interesting. Yeah. Old Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard. I guess she did. <laughs> went to the cabinet. So, of course, we live in the city, so we have a small section of a cabinet dedicated to our Christmas. And it's like half the cabinet, and it's not very wide, say no. two and a half feet wide and three and a half, let's say four feet Christmas, high. Christmas in the city, you know, you have to, any holiday uh, things that you keep any seasonal things that you have in your home you really have to have the conversation with yourself is the thing and keeping the thing worth more than the space that it's taking i think everyone needs to have that conversation though i don't know if that's just a city thing but it's certainly it's certainly a factor for us sure we don't just have extra rooms or extra space that we can just find homes for. We've talked a lot about that. It's true. And so we... Find, home, find things home for. I didn't say that right. Find mm. home for things. Right. Find things for... What am I trying to say? Find home for things we admire. Okay. Or love. And I got really dyslexic. Dis- 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 yeah, I got, I got turned around there. Sure. So here's the thing, Amanda. Mm. As you know, we decided to pare down our Christmas items and only have the things that we truly love for the holidays. So we have some we have some Christmas things and we have some holiday things mm-hmm. and it had to fit in this small cabinet but yeah. also be able to decorate our home so that it it feels like the home has been Holiday-fied. So in terms of storage in this house, I mean, we're we're luckier than some. Um, but for the most part, we have uh, – they're, they're big, white, Ikea closets? What are they? Sure. Storage? Storage cupboards, units. Cupboards, cabinets. Um, the kind that sort of look like one big white block and then you – with little levers or handles that you can open. And um, we had a friend who is an architect, um, and he decided to drop some plans for our basement when we redid our basement. Right. And so he came. I don't think I would have come up with that idea of just putting in IKEA. I think I wouldn't have thought of that. But he said, "You probably want some storage. So here's here's a simple storage solution, and it won't take up too much space. So we have them, and it's essentially like having." Three lockers. That's almost yeah. how I think about it. That's a good way to describe and it. And one is mine and one is yours. And then the middle one, which is the smallest, most narrow one, is the one that has sort of three sections. 
The middle to bottom part is holiday stuff. The middle is board games. Is board games, and then the top part is stuff for our Vespa. That's right, helmets and so it's and not a lot of space. No, it's not. And and quite frankly, there's been some board game activity in the horizon <laughs> in this house. So I don't think our board games now fit in that cupboard. I think there needs to be some new strategy. It's true, as because our... I noticed that they're they're finding homes all over the house. As our dear listeners may have heard me talk about certain board games, Wingspan in particular. So during the lockdown, I found that I was watching so much television because there wasn't much that we could do. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to get back to something I love, which is playing board games. Mm -hmm. And I'm very fortunate because my wife, Amanda, who sits in front of me, is like, if that's what you need to do, that's what you do. And so I've acquired a few board games that I, I sort of researched that I'm eager to play and some that we have played. And of course, around, you know, the holidays and Christmas, when I was a child, getting a board game for Christmas mm -hmm. was for me the ultimate gift. Oh, really? Yeah. Like one year I got an aquarium and I was over the moon. I was little. I was maybe nine, Aww. nine or ten. And I was just over the moon. But if you got me a board game. Even a board game that I couldn't play. I remember I was like 10 and someone gave me Paul Economy, which is like this really complicated. What game is that? It's a very complicated Paul game. Paul Economy? Paul Economy, yeah. Oh, my God. I've never heard of this. So Paul Economy, and I was talking to somebody about this on the podcast, actually. I want to say it was Tyler Murray. Okay. And I want to shout out Brad Tapson, who is our architect friend yeah. who, who designed this, and he's a fantastic architect. He's for hire, He's so you can find him. And he's wonderful. Yeah, he's and really great. I'm very grateful. We have the studio because of him. Yeah, truly. really, and I haven't given him the props for that, but I wouldn't. we mm -hmm. wouldn't be recording here in this space if it were not for Brad Tapson. It's true. Thank you, Brad. So back to Paul Economy. So mm -hmm. Paul Economy is this really complex game that deals with the Commonwealth system of government. So I think it was a game made in New Zealand or Australia. I looked this up. And so it basically follows the parliamentary style of government that the Commonwealth models itself after the UK British Parliament system, right? And therefore, Amanda's <laughs> eyes are starting to close. Yeah. And so I was trying really hard to stay with you on all of that. Well, imagine that for a ten-year-old no, child, and I know who I, gave you that gift, Mary LaFranco. Oh no way, really? Yeah, yeah. And I'm <laughs> sure she regifted it. The infamous Mary LaFranco. Mary LaFranco is or was my sister's godmother, and she was a character and a. And a Can we talk about her a little more? Briefly, I don't know I if we should wanna, be talking just, so much about Mary I just want to say that she's – I never met the woman. No, you didn't. She has taken up – she's a – clearly was a big personality. She was. She, when your mother was pregnant, apparently insisted she must be the godmother. She did. So your mother went, okay, and went went for it. But it sounded like she was just a really colorful, generous – big personality. She was. She was a pistol. You know how people describe someone as a pistol? She was definitely yeah. a pistol. I wish I would have met her. She was the type of person who I wish I wish I could have met her at this point in my life because I knew her when I was a kid, right? Mm -hmm. But she's the type of person who would tell a dirty joke, oh, wow. who you could play cards with, who would just... Who would re-gift you Paul Economy. Yeah. And, you know, would just, you know, just someone you would want to go to Vegas with. She always had to me this sort of, you know, that old Vegas quality, kind that, of like, the rat pack, you know. I think it makes sense that she's no longer around because it feels like she's of a certain era. Most definitely. Like she's of the 70s, like of Dallas dynasty, the early 80s, that kind of thing. 100%. Wow. Anyway, she was. She, she lives in infamy and now on this podcast. For sure. I feel like we shouted out Brad Tapson. I feel like we should shout out the other half of why we have this studio, which has nothing to do with the holidays or what. You wanted to talk about, but Chris Emanuel, smartreno.ca, he was a one-man incredible show that that put together the studio as well. So I just want to shout out to him because he he and Brad were the reno. There you go. There it is. And Amanda, we I replaced our fall wreath with my infamous 
Christmas wreath? That cranberry wreath. I think that wreath is now. I mean, we have been married 11 years. Yes. It predates our dating relationship. So uh, we have been dating uh, like 14 years. So it's a 15-year-old wreath at this point. And we'll have Dale Boyer on the podcast to talk about that Mm -hmm. in the upcoming days. So that's just something to look forward to on these holiday episodes. Mm -hmm. But we replaced our doormat. Or sorry, our wreath and our doormat. It was a turkey for the fall. Yeah. And now we have a new doormat. And it's it's the one that's – it's a car with a Christmas tree on top? That's correct. Oh, yeah. oh, so cute. And yet we didn't get a Christmas tree yet, but I think we will. I put up our, our – Faux Christmas tree. I put up two faux Christmas so trees. So let's outline what we've managed to fit into that very oh, okay. tiny, skinny, and I'm telling you, it is skinny cupboard. Like it's the size of like my legs. That's pretty much it. <laughs> like so, we. It's a bit deep, though. It is deep. It's so. deeper, but it not by much. Um. Well, okay, my legs standing up then. Sure. <laughs> but. It's, um, we have a tiny little Christmas tree. Your leg is your leg the same size, whether you're standing or sitting or lying, lying down. Okay, whatever. Sure, okay. Four sets of legs then, I okay. don't know. Anyway, maybe my legs are not the right unit of measurement. I have short legs. But. I would say two Canada geese standing <laughs> with their necks erect. Could get into that cupboard, yeah, you think? side by side. And that's about as, as, so. deep as, as, really? as deep as it. Yeah, I would say two Canada I would say geese. a Canada goose and a half. So like a Canada goose and a duck? A Canada goose and a loon. No, it's bigger than, oh, maybe a Canada goose and three loons stacked one on top of the what other. What is this conversation? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, how, how great would it be if that was our unit of measurement? Our unit of measurement? It pretty much is. foul. It's, it's, our, it's on our money. Sure. The loon, by the way, is Ontario's state bird. Did you know that? A provincial bird, you mean. Oh, yes. <laughs> We're in yes. a province. I'm in Canada. Paul Economy. Anyway. Well, what's Massachusetts state bird? Do you remember? Chickadee? No, that's New Brunswick's. Is it? Yeah, provincial bird is the... Do you know Massachusetts State? I can't remember. I mean, it's not for me to know. The flower needs to be the Mayflower, right? That's that's of, that's actually Nova Scotia's flower. Flower. Yeah. Anyways, uh, let's get back to the this, to the drawer. None of this has to do with holidays. <laughs> I just wanted to talk about what was in our cupboard yes. slash cabinet slash cupboard. Um, anyway, we have a Christmas tree that is... The kind that you can like, like an umbrella. It's not full size, but it's not completely short. It's it's maybe like four feet. Yeah, and it's not. Yeah, and it's it's not like an umbrella that you open it like an umbrella, but you fit the pieces into one another. And I would say the the but they collapse, right? They pull apart. Yeah, they pull apart, but they also collapse, right? You can squeeze them together so all the branches yeah go tight. Sort of like three pulls, and then you pull the branches out connect the poles to each other and you know it's not the biggest fullest tree but it is a tree it's four feet like you said yeah but anyways it's cute so we have that but we what we've been doing lately is not using that tree but cutting a tree from the cottage like we did last year right from the woods up there so not a perfect tree but nevertheless we have to cut trees up there so we kind of kill two birds with one stone with that so we if we have time we'll go up there and and do that, but we put the faker tree in the window. To I be call like it a faux tree, a show tree. Really, it is a ch- show tree. Look, we have a tree, um, and then we have a little tiny one that you've put on the the table or the little fake fireplace yeah, thing. Yeah, and that's anyway. fifteen centimeters high. And then we have all our ornaments and boxes, right? And I believe we've talked about this in the past. I think we talked about it last year, but we keep everything else. Other than those two trees, everything else in boxes that look like presents, they're pre-wrapped boxes or some of them are just, they just look like presents. So all, oh, the, right. all yeah. the ornaments go into those boxes. So they're All kind my of... Christmas socks get, an, get their own box and, and uh, there's a Christmas sweater. It's like Christmas attire, right. socks, sweater. You have some socks in there too, by the way. Oh, do I? Oh, yeah. okay. Some I reindeer f- socks. Oh, I forgot I had some And the reindeer. ones that are like, ho, ho, ho. So those boxes, we got some fancy, sturdy boxes from Costco a few years back that are already pre-decorated so that they look wrapped, but they're actually, that's the box itself. Mm-hmm. And it has some sparkle on it. And as we said yesterday, I really like sparkly things for the holidays. 
And so they were great boxes and you could give gifts in them. But for whatever reason, we didn't give gifts or we gave each other gifts in those boxes. And so we kept them as storage for all our holiday stuff. And then what we do is we just put them under the tree so it looks like there's a present. Instant but, Christmas. But really, it's just the boxes that house <laughs> our our decor. Yeah. I mean, we'll put presents under the tree too. But um, yeah, so all of the ornaments are in there. Uh, did you find the light? There was a, a snowflake light. I there. didn't find the snowflake <gasps> light. Maybe we don't have it anymore. No, we we must have it. I just I just Or should we just put the Halloween skeletons? That's the one Halloween thing we've held on to. Yeah, we have one Halloween thing that actually sits in our Christmas cupboard. Yeah, so it's a really truly a seasonal cupboard, mm-hmm. not just Christmas cupboard, but Halloween doesn't get I used to have a wonderful Dracula, but he took up so much room for basically one week out of the year. I couldn't uh I couldn't keep him anymore, so we we uh, off he went into a yard sale. Yes. somebody has my Dracula now. Um, that that little that little light that that makes globes when you plug it in and you point. What's it that to called? The, um, a kaleidoscope or a, yeah, a kaleidoscope light. It's one of those, dear listeners. It's one of those that projects. You've seen them, and they've become really popular in the last 10 years, but, like, projects. Against a wall. Like snowflakes or whatever, anyway. I think it's in the box that houses the the thing you put the Christmas tree in, the Christmas tree stand. Oh, okay. And the vessel that holds the water. I think it, I've put it in there to save room. Sure. it's a, Well, we'll find it. We shall, we shall find it. In time. <laughs> <laughs> Probably find it right before Christmas. Now, Amanda, an upcoming episode, you and I discuss stockings, so we're not going to be discussing that today. This was from years past. We probably talked all about the boxes that we just talked about. That's probably going to be in another episode. I don't think so, but upcoming episodes from years past, you'll hear Amanda and I talking about our Christmas stockings. But throughout the episodes that I do with various friends, I always ask them what their favorite carols are. Okay. It's something I do when I'm not on the podcast and I've done for years. You do always ask people that. I just always love hearing what everyone's favorite favorite carol is. I think you, it's it's different each year. I kind of like to pick a theme one each year. Oh, really? Yeah. Like one year I liked that Elton John one and I usually hate that Elton John one. What Elton John one? Step into Christmas. Step oh, I don't know Christmas. that one. Well, it doesn't matter. You, you'd know it to hear okay. it. Okay. I don't want to – for lots of reasons. Nobody needs me singing. Also Elton. the copyright. We don't have the copyright. Well, no, I know that was the first reason. But also nobody needs to hear me singing Elton John on a podcast. But So do you have one this year? Because I can tell you mine. Well – I have my three or four favorites. You have your all-time greatest holiday hits. And you'll hear them throughout the episode. So I'll just say this. The most recent one that I like is Casey Musgraves. Mm-hmm. She does some awesome holiday songs. And if, if you get a chance, download it. And if uh, Casey is listening, you know, it's your it's your Christmas songs that made me really – Listen to your canon. Listen to all your songs. And Honestly, I, th- I think you're. Sh- she's a genius. She's a great songwriter. She's, she's a great songwriter. No question. One hundred percent. But her her approach to Christmas is like yes. But her vocals. Yeah, so they're I so have, wonderful, so have, clear, and she, she's the like a bell. Utmost respect for her songwriting. Mm-hmm. The utmost respect for her musicality and her voice. Mm-hmm. It needs to be said. So thank you, Casey. So the song that. That I fall in love with that she sings is glittery. Oh, it's so beautiful. But I also love. Uh, well, that was give me one. Okay, sure. And the other one that I mean, there's a bunch that she does. She does a great Melakaliki Maka, a great Felice Navidad, yes. and I like those kind of tropical holiday ones. But the the one that we're really loving is uh, a Willie Nice Christmas that she does with Willie Nelson. It's such a fun song, and it's so catchy and well written and. F- and and uh, and uh, sassy, like it. It has a humor. It has a humor to it. That but it's a great song, like, cause and it's also a really great song. Because sometimes humorous songs aren't musically, um, musically. What, what's the word I'm looking for? Astute, or it's not. Yeah, like, like that Grandma one. on the Reindeer. Yeah, and, they're kind yeah, of no, cute songs. But no, this no, is a great. This one song. is a really catchy, fun song that also has a little 
uh, it's like a wink to the listener, yeah, so if you will. Check that one out. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so that's th- that's sort of the carols that I'm I'm into as of late. But. Yeah, those two I really like. Well, I will say this: if anybody, it's not it's I'm still working on it, but you can follow my Spotify playlist, Christmas to the Maximus. I don't know why I called it that because I started it about five years ago or something. But I, I there's just, like. 11 songs on it. It's not even a, a great... It's a work in progress. Okay. Okay. There's also an amazing um, Hanukkah song um, by um, uh, Sharon... Is it Sharon King and the Dap, the Dap Kings? Oh, what, who is it? I think you're thinking of Sharon Jones. Yeah, and the Dap Kings. Yes. Yeah. It's wonderful. Oh, my God. It's such a great song. Such a fun, soulful Hanukkah song. Really great song. And there's not enough Hanukkah songs. Uh, and happy Hanukkah to everyone who is celebrating Hanukkah. Mm-hmm. Thank you for listening. Mm-hmm. Um, we so, we have a menorah somewhere as well that I haven't taken do out. Do we? Oh, we or may- did it not make it in the I cupboard? Think, we had one for a long time. And I think I gave it to Jeff. I think we did. Because Jeff was we, like, Jeff was like, because here's the thing: we had a lot of Christmas stuff, mm-hmm. and when we redid the basement, we really had to, you know, have those conversations sure. about things and, and purge some stuff. So. Things like a kaleidoscope that has a great impact but is fits in the size of my palm is great. But a huge menorah <laughs> that we don't even light that sits there, um, you know, it, it's, it's a great – in theory, if we had a bigger home, I'd be all for it. But we don't. So. Well, my friend Jeff has our menorah and he loves it and he lights it with his family. Mm-hmm. And so we thought it would be better served if Jeff had – a menorah mm-hmm. to celebrate Hanukkah with his family. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, Can I tell you about a carol? Uh, yeah, because are we on carols still? I don't know. Well, I want to tell this story, and it's a little bit sad. Oh, gosh. Oh. So when I was in grade two, we were doing a Christmas concert at my school. Which is second grade for American listeners. Right, second grade. Because Canadians will never – here's a hot tip. <laughs> Decoding Canada – by Amanda Barker, you will never hear a Canadian say second grade. It will always be grade one, grade two, grade three. I don't know why that is, but that's it is. how we roll. That's how we roll. So where you you were in grade two? I was in grade two, and we got to do this Christmas concert. And so the teacher was writing all carols that we liked on the board to incorporate into our our presentation. Okay. And so I rose my hand up. All right, I rose my hand. My hand. Arose. We can't talk tonight. No, we can't. I don't it's, think you rose your hand up. Your hand rose up. Well, I mean, my you hand, raised your hand. My hand didn't spontaneously <laughs> rise. You raised your hand then. You didn't rose it. Right, I raised my hand. Oh my gosh! If it was an Easter song, yes, then... I know where you're going with it. Okay, you can keep making those jokes if you want. Not if you stop me halfway through the joke. Well, I think everyone knows what you're. We know what rose usually. Okay, okay. If you want to get religious, we can. Listen, can I just tell my my tragic story that's been oh, with gosh. me? Oh, gosh. So I, I put we my— We promised peppy episodes. This is going to be peppy. Marco's sad Christmas tale of woe. Well, listen, everyone, everyone needs to hear a little sadness to find the joy in the season, I think. As Casey Musgraves always <laughs> says. Would sing. Okay. There's a rainbow. Uh, even though there's storm clouds, there's a rainbow over your head or something like that. So, put my hand in the air, teacher picked me, and I said, Silent Night. And she wrote Silent Night on the board. Okay. So, it was going to be in our list of songs. Okay. And when we were practicing, she she could tell that the kids couldn't sing the song. There was something about it, or I didn't What's have the vocal ability. What's wrong with your class? That's an easy uh, one. Well, the teacher didn't like what we were doing. And I think I was like the lead on that, and so she didn't oh, like. Yeah, so in your voice, I suppose. Oh, and you so, thing. and so it got cut oh, from the no. song. Yeah, no. and it didn't make it. But I love. I still love that song to this day. But it has a bittersweet uh, oh. feel for me. But I sing it now. I don't care. It's a very slow song. I think kids that was it. That, that I think that was the thing. It was. Too slow, and you could imagine after singing "Frosty the Snowman," right. you go into up on the rooftop, click, click, click. That was the one we sang. After you, you can't go from that to "Silent Night" and expect the kids to slow down. So here's something we would do in first grade. Sure, 
Uh, or grade one, as we know it here in Canada. Right, but it Let was, me tell you something about Americans, listener. They <laughs> never say grade one. But, but it was in the States, so first grade, um, in uh, Center Elementary School in Hanover. And Mrs. Kelsch uh, would do this thing every year. I think all the first graders would do it in the same room. I don't know. Anyway, we would do this thing called St. Lucia's Breakfast. Oh, yes. I don't, I've heard about this. I don't understand why we did this. I don't know what significance it had for anyone. It wasn't a, we were, it was not a Catholic school. Right. So I don't know why we were doing St. Lucia's breakfast. And, and wouldn't and, it be Lucia? Well, it depends. I guess it who, depends. what language you speak. Yeah. But, so, I mean, I think the, the Saints Day for St. Lucy or Santa Lucia is, is like January something. We would do St. Lucia's breakfast, and all the parents would come and eat breakfast, and we would wear the, we'd make wreaths of candles to put on our heads, but we'd make them out of paper. But the idea was like... This is the most bizarre thing. I know. I think it's a Swedish tradition. I we think look it this is. Up. Yeah. I think it is. It's like a weird Nordic... Well, that, we shouldn't say weird. It's, it's no, different no. for us. You're right. You're yeah. absolutely right. You're right. I mean, it was... Unusual. It's, we, we, it was unusual that in this one school in Massachusetts that they would be like, this is our tradition. We're doing this. But I don't know. So they would invite all the parents and they would eat breakfast with us and we would do this like Christmas presentation for them for St. Lucia's breakfast. And I love the pancake part of this. Well, I didn't take pancakes, but there was. I thought, I thought it was pancakes. I think it is pancakes. Yeah. I don't know. There was. It was breakfast. I don't know if it was pancakes, but it was breakfast for sure. I was promised I think it was pancakes. Like, I thought it was pancakes. I think pancakes. pancakes were one of them, but it okay. was like eggs and bacon and – the cafeteria made it, so I don't know. Anyway, but the parents would eat it there and we'd have our wreaths and we would do this whole presentation in Miss, Mrs. Kelsch's room. And the wreaths would be on your heads. Yeah. <laughs> on both the male and the female students' heads. Yeah, on okay. every student's head. Okay. They would have a wreath with candles that we made out of paper. And we had, like, we made them as elaborate as we could, but these, like, wreaths of paper that look like paper, like, they're paper candles and paper greenery. But we made them, and then we'd wear them on our heads, and we <laughs> we would sing all these Christmas carols and stuff. And uh, and then, so, and we had to serve our parents breakfast. That oh. was part of it. The kids would serve the breakfast. Oh, the parents must have loved that. You know, it was such a – when I think about it now, I mean, it was just a thing we did. But it was such a unique, weird – I say weird. I don't mean weird. But it was such a unique – I know. Don't offend our Scandinavian listeners. We have <laughs> – and ACAST is a Scandinavian <laughs> – oh, I don't want them to pull us a Scandinavian podcast platform. It was uh, just platform one of those we're things on. where, you know, when you're a kid, you just think this is what everyone does. We serve sure. our parents breakfast with paper wreaths on our heads. And then you find out, no, nobody else did that. That but was it's like kind of lovely that the kids served their parents. We loved breakfast. it, and you kids. wore, and so you wore these these wreaths on yeah, your head. And yeah. did you sing a song? Yeah, we sang like we did a whole presentation of songs. So it was like a medley. So we oh. did like up on the rooftop, click click click. That so one. so you did your greatest hits. Yeah, well, like Santa's greatest hits. Okay. Yeah. Well, speaking of Santa's greatest hits, Amanda, we're getting to the end of our episode, <laughs> and you may have heard off the top of the episode we played. I saw three ships. Yes. So I, Sting has a version of that song that I really, really like. It's such a pretty little song. It is a song. And is that one that you associate with the holidays? Yeah. Because it doesn't – it's about ships, isn't it? I saw three ships come sailing in – what's the next on one? On Christmas Day, Day in the on morning. On Christmas Day. In the I morning. S- yeah. On Christmas Day in the morning. Right. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. So – that's what we led today's episode with. Every every episode, I'm going to put a different holiday song on there. Mm-hmm. Do you like that song? I saw three shows. I do. I do. There's something very sing-song sweet about it, and it feels – here's my thing. It feels old-timey, and it feels British. And if there's one thing that the Brits have really – Figured Quarter out the market is old timiness. Is old timey well? It's Christmas, right? Is just in general. Sure. I mean, it, I I kind of think they like they, they that cornered would be, the market. They on cornered it. the market on Christmas, like Love Actually, Christmas Carol, Sting. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll leave it at that. You know, I have a fondness for especially a British Christmas. Amanda last year got me 
uh, a box of British chocolates to celebrate Christmas. I've gotten it for you a few years, yeah. Because she knows how much. And I love figgy pudding. I love all those put. Anyways. That's what I mean. Like Christmas and Brits. Like they they get it. Like they, they, they really lean into it and go for it. You know? I think every culture no, has I, a I beautiful, do beautiful holiday celebration, as we heard with the Scandinavian one that Maybe you Maybe we should talk about that around the world different. Because, sure. Um, because I've also done Christmas like in New York and Christmas, in, as have you. Right. And Christmas in New York is spectacular too and totally different. True. Yeah. And we'll talk about that in episodes to come. Christmas but, in Florida. But but for now, we'll say thank you for listening to our episode today. And we'll leave you with I Saw Three Ships. And thank you. I'm Marco Timpano. That, I felt like there was more to that because you were trying to figure out what the name of that song is. No, I was hoping you were going to say, and I'm Amanda Barker. Oh. I, and I'm Amanda Barker sailing in on Christmas Day in the morning. Thank you for listening, and we hope you were able to listen and enjoy this episode. Stay tuned. Tomorrow we'll have another one. <laughs>